Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shah, all praise to Yahweh, Bashim Yahweh Shah, Bashim Rikakadash, uh, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they evenly called Jesus Christ. Now, this is something very, very important, and I'm going to keep bringing it out because it Everyone is ignoring this situation and they're making it complicated when the scriptures is very uh, accessible and it's plain uh, in the scriptures. Now, we know, um, well, let me just get straight to the precept. I'm going to get straight to the precept. And I'm going to go off some of the, the more familiar precepts so people can understand where this is going. Okay, Jeremiah 28 and 8. It says, the, pro the prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war, evil, and of pestilence. So these kingdoms was again, they were speaking against the kingdoms. Okay, they was not in agreement with the kingdoms. Okay, let's get another familiar verse. And this is a verse that everyone is getting wrong. I mean, the Christianity, the Jehovah Wickedness, and most of the Israelite camps is getting this wrong. And it's very, it's a very important scripture, but it has many precepts to go with it. Now, we're going to Ephesians 6 and 12, and we're going to break this thing down with precepts. Okay, Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. It's not that what Jeremiah said. Against powers, against the rulers. Who are rulers? Who are powers? That's what the Romans 13 is about. Against rulers of the darkness of this world. This world. Not in another world somewhere. Not in another dimension. This world. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. Why is it spiritual? Let's get that in Daniel. Why is it a spiritual thing? But it's, it's still of this world. But it's spiritual. See. That's what people getting mixed up. It's of this world and it's spiritual. Daniel 4.17. Getting straight to the point. To the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. And giveth it to whosoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men. See? The Most High set up men over the kingdoms, over the countries. He didn't set up uh, any kind of other being or creature or, or creation. He set the men up in this world to be ruling these countries and these kingdoms and these governments that have flags. See... And see, people following Christianity, Christianity always preaching about some other force than the Most High and men. They want to get away from the Most High and to get away from their actions as men. They don't want to hold themselves accountable for the thing that they're doing, destroying the earth. They want to say it's another, it's a somebody else, uh, it's a problem with somebody else. And the elephant in the, in the room is some angel. Some group of angels doing it. We ain't doing it. It ain't our fault. Now when you go into Matthew chapter 4. 
verse 8 it say again and the devil taketh him up into exceedingly high mountain mountain represents kingdom he was in the kingdom the, the highest mount, the highest kingdom that was existing at that time and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them see that is an allegory that is an allegory to the devil is in control of these kingdoms verse 9 and he said unto him all these will I give unto you okay so he offering the kingdom let's go to Luke 4 4 and we're going to get straight to the point verse 6 and the devil said unto him all this power see we're going to get into that power that's that Romans 13 we're going to get into that power but it says and the devil said unto him all this power will I give to thee and the glory of them for that is delivered unto me and to whomever I will I give it okay okay so you got the Lord telling you in Daniel 4 and 17 that he delivered the gut these governments and these kingdoms into the power of base men wicked men the earth was given into the hand of the wicked so where's this angel that he gave this to where is this these fake uh fallen angels that's what that's the that's the elephant in the room but Christianity and the so-called slave master pushed this and these sellout Negroes that started Christianity they pushed it because they didn't want to be accountable on they just was pushing the heresy they wanted power for themselves because the popes was was, was running the kingdom the popes was the, the head man on earth they was running everything through the religion and they talking about some fallen angel. Because our people started that crap. The, 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 uh, what you want to call it, the apostasy of Israelites. They started pushing this Christianity mess. And the so-called white man, he picked it up on the plantation and kept mandating it and pushing it. And you got all these Jehovah Wickedness and all these Israelites, they still sticking, because most of them was came out of Christianity. All the most all of them came out of Christianity and Jehovah Wickedness. And they all pushing that the the there's some angel flying around, there's some demons and all this kind of stuff. When God control the angels, God is putting them angels, them just the hands of God. They the messengers of God. He touching people with angels. It ain't no they rebelling and they just they Satan. They the adversary. No adversary mean they're against what God got going on. There is no direction of any angel being against what God got going on. They the hands of God. But anyhow, let's get into these precepts. Uh, let's go back to Jeremiah and let's get this word princip principality. And then we're going to get the word power and put both of them together. With both of them in together in most of the verses. Jeremiah 13 and 18. And it reads. Say unto the king and to the queen. Humble yourself. Sit down. For your principalities shall come down even the crown of your glory. Your kingdom is going to come down. Your government is going to come down, king and queen. That's what principalities mean. It don't mean no freaking angel. But that's what Christianity is pushing. So they don't, because they don't want to be accountable. Because that's their government, supposed to be a Christian government. See, they want to combine church and state. And it's never supposed to be combined, it's supposed to be separated. Because the state is the gut is the, is the devil, and 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 the Lord always went against the state. 
the major the matter the the government the principalities he always went against countries and kingdoms okay now let's get in the new testament we got a lot in the new testament let me go right back to ephesians let's get this ephesians because this is where the, the lives began so let's clear up what ephesians is talking about Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 it says to the intent now don't that sound like Daniel 4 and 17 to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God principalities and powers in heavenly places Heavenly don't mean up there with God. And it don't mean no in another dimension. It means kingdoms and rulerships. Now we know what these elite elites that's controlling the government, we know what they're thinking. We know what they want to do through the wisdom of God. Because he let us know who is the devil, who we need to watch, who we need to be aware of, who is conspiring against us. Who has been trying to exterminate us? Psalms 83. Psalms chapter 2. Esther. We know who's been trying to exterminate us. The kings. The kingdoms. Okay, when you let's get um go back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21. It say, um, Again with this heavenly places. Let me read verse 20 to get the context. Which he wrought in, in Yahabashah Mashiach when he raised him from the dead and set him on his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion. That, now dominion is another word they try to hide and make means something else it means rulership so all the powers and the rulerships and the governments he made Yahweh who sit in the heavenly places above all these things it says and every name that is named not only in this world see he's talking about this world but also that which is to come so in this world the principality the powers, the government the might, the rulerships. See, that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about no freaking angels, man. Okay, now we're going to Colossians. Colossians got a lot of meat on the bone. Okay, Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. It says, For him, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, that's, see, we talking about rulership, man, dominions, principalities, and powers, nothing else is named, because it's all about the kingdoms and the countries, kingdoms and countries, okay, because it say he gave, he set up the base men to rule, he set the base men up the rule. Colossians 2, verse 10, it says, And ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. The Most High set up the base men and he controlled the, the men. The men's goings is of the Lord. Proverbs uh, 20 and 24. Proverbs 21 and verse 1. He moved the king's heart like a river wherever he want to move it. He controlled these men. Revelation 17 and 17. He put it in the, the king's heart to do his will, to fulfill his will. See? He controlled these people, man. And it ain't got nothing to do with no fallen angel. Um, okay. Oh, 15. Second, uh, Colossians, the second chapter verse 15 
and having spoiling principalities and powers. Why are those two words always together? Principalities and powers. I don't read at least four or five verses with principalities and powers because that means the government, the rulers over the people. Okay. Uh, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. So he show openly that he's going to destroy these kingdoms. Daniel 2.44. He's going to set up a kingdom and break all these kingdoms into pieces, man. Good gracious. How do these people fall for that fallen angel crap? An angel being against God. An angel ain't obeying God and doing what God told them to do. I got that in Psalms 103. Well, let me get this Titus. Titus 3 and uh, chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse 1. It say, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates to be ready to every good work. So, he will let them know you you need to obey these uh, principalities and powers sometime. And I'm I'm saying sometime because it's at this very end is certain things you don't obey. You obey God rather than men. So it's some it's some some instances that you don't obey these people. But he's telling you put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers because. That's when the Romans 13 come into play. See, but you at no time do you supposed to be subject to a, a demon. No, at no time should you be subject to any kind of spirit that supposed to be a principality and a power. See, that, that shows you that these people don't know what they're talking about, man. These people are pushing that Christianity crap made by our rebellious uh, forefathers and the, and, and the these, uh, slave master um, our slave masters who's grabbing our history book trying to keep us in captivity now Romans 13 it says let every soul be subject unto the higher power so you post if powers mean that these fallen angels, we're supposed to be subject to the fallen angels now. We're supposed to be subject to the demons. That's what they're saying. If that's what that's what the powers and principalities mean, see, because all of it is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. They say put them. This is in Titus three and one. Put them in mind to be subject to the principalities and powers governments and powers is the same thing Romans 13 let every soul be sub subject unto the higher powers for there is no power but of God if no fallen angel out here that got some power he sent every angel to do his work if it's good or bad he sent them to do it what so um, Proverbs 17 and 11 an evil man uh, he, if, if the, he, he gonna send a, a, a crew of messenger to the evil men, the men that's doing the wrong thing. Um, okay, Romans 13. Uh, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. See, these governments are set up by the Most High. Now, I'm gonna jump down to to uh no let's keep going to whosoever this is Romans 13 and 2 whosoever therefore resist the power resist the ordinance of God and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation verse 3 for if rulers are not that lets you know what the powers mean man that's what uh Ephesians 6 and 12 said powers principalities meaning governments and rulers see you're against all of these things man for rulers are not a terror to the good works but to the evil 
And so we against them, but we against them through prophesying. We prophesy against the kingdom. But we over what they saying, and we don't go and try to battle with these people because it's not a flesh and blood. We're not battling with them with flesh and blood. See, we battling with them with the prophecies. We gonna let them know the prophecies, prophesy against them. But when they try to tell us to do something, we obey God rather than man. It's a simple situation. It's not hard. When they tell us to break God's law, to disobey God, then we don't obey them. But outside of obeying God, we be subject to those powers. So, what don't people, what is this confusion? The confusion is Christian and the tell, tell, trying to tell you that it, uh, this stuff is spiritual. It has nothing to do with man and the government. But the man in the government is the devil, is Satan. Just because God set them up, see, that don't that don't mean nothing. They still is the devil and Satan. I got another one. Uh let's see here. Let me get Matt, let me end it on that loop. And so this is what people this is another thing what the what the Israelites they want to harp and bring Christianity into this thing, man. Talking about a fallen angel, some angel floating around here that got on something to to, to to trick people. Come on man, he don't he ain't sending no angels to trick people. Especially the the, the the righteous people. That's the main thing. Yes, he sending angels to do stuff that's not uh for your for people's benefit, and he's sending angels to do stuff for people's benefit. But if you wicked, then you gonna get the angels that's not for your benefit. And if you righteous, you gonna get the angels that's for your benefit. Simple. But this is talking about the government, man. In, in, in Luke, this is a, a allegory about these governments that they are the devil. Luke 4 and 5. It say, and the devil taking him up into the high mountain. Hold on, so let's go back to 4 because this is what really is coming down to when you're talking about this MO, you know what. It say, Yahweh shall answer him, saying, It is written. That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. What is the famine all about? The famine is going to cause people to want to, to deal with the, 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 the government and these kingdoms that they're living in or these places that they're living in in captivity and try to obey him rather than God. But he tells you that man should not live on bread alone. Why are you worrying about the famine? and dying you're going to do what this devil say and you're going to die and that's that form of worship what what uh revelation 13 it say the beast won't you, you people going to worship the beast they're going to worship the government they're going to worship this country they're going to worship a, a kingdom that means they're going to give uh give some kind of form of worship a compliance they're going to consent that's what uh, the second elder 16 they gonna consent to the government but let's get that they get the whole parable or, or allegory uh, Luke 4 and 4 and Yahweh shall answer and said unto him it is written that man should not live by bread alone but by every word of Yahweh Verse 5, And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in, in a moment of time. 6, And the, the devil said unto him, All this power will I give to thee and thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whosoever I will, whosoever I, will I give it. So he's saying, you, I got the power over these kingdoms, and I give it to whoever I want to give it to. And so, let's see here. 
it was another piece to that situation. Um, because he asked him, he asked him to do something. Let me get that. He asked him to do something. Okay. Verse 7. Luke 4 and 7. If thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. What all? He was just talking about bread. See? He was talking about bread. And he talking about the kingdom. So... You're going to be able to do everything in this kingdom, whatever that's, you know, the glory of this kingdom, you're going to be able to eat and have fun in this kingdom. If you just do what I tell you to do, a form of worship. A form of worship is obedience. That's how you worship, obedience. And that's the same thing in Revelation 13 and 16, man. So, it's clear. There's no fallen angels the government and these kingdoms is what we prophesy against is what we tell they gonna be destroyed by the kingdom of Israel the kingdom of Israel is gonna put them in captivity same revelation 13 and 10 the people that's gonna be Satan and the devil and try to get us to worship them we going to prophesy against them and tell them that they going into captivity. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Because we still in captivity. So we prophesying against these kingdoms. All the kingdoms of the world because they have us in captivity. It's Israelites and all the kingdoms. So we got to prophesy to all the kingdoms telling them, you going into captivity. You is the adversary of God. You is the devil. You going into captivity. You going to be destroyed by our kingdom what is it uh, Jeremiah 51 and 20 let, let, let me end on that Jeremiah 51 and 20 it say thou art my battle axe and weapons of war for with thee will I break in pieces the nations and with thee will I destroy kingdoms see we supposed to prophesy that the kingdom is going to be destroyed. And they are Satan, the devil. There's no fallen angel around here doing anything. You see, it's all about these kingdoms ruling over us in captivity. And we're going to prophesy against them. And when they tell us, tell us not to obey God, we're going to reject them. We don't care about no for eating some food, having a job. See, we don't care about your money. It's obey God and disobey man if they trying to tell you otherwise. And so everybody don't have to come to that realization. But I'm going to leave it there. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kakadash, double honors to the elders pushing the truth. Peace of the elect worldwide. Our kingdom is at hand. Shalom.